What's up guys? It's Katie, also known as the Junkin' Pumpkin, and welcome, or welcome back to my channel. It's been a long time since I have seen you guys, and by a long time, I mean like two or three weeks, but man, have I had a lot going on. So, as you know, I am only a part-time reseller, and so my full-time job is a rural mail carrier, so I deliver mail out in the country, and man, oh man, <laughs> I'm just so sick of that job. They work me to death. I'm over it. I have to work every single weekend so I don't get my weekends off to go to the garage sales and go sourcing. So I put in my two weeks. Yeah. I am not going full time yet. That's the plan. But I got a new job where I have a set schedule. I have my weekends off. I am taking a couple dollars pay loss, but I mean, it's whatever, because I got my sugar daddy boyfriend to take care of me. And plus, I mean, I make a decent amount doing reselling. It feels so good to be back here already. Switching this job is going to be so good for my mental health. I don't mean the best to the post office, but as a lot of you fellow resellers know, the people there really suck. And that was the case in my office. And to get away from all these people complaining all the time and me getting called in all the time and me being the only one forced to work all the time, it's going to be so good. And now my work's going to be appreciated somewhere else. But ignore this big mess behind me. I don't like having a death pile, but I've been trying to stock up on one since I am going to be in between jobs. And I don't like transitions. I don't like change. Honestly, I'm really stressed out about it, so I've been... Uh, stocking up, like I said, I don't know if it's cause it's retail therapy cause I've been stressed or if it's just to make the transition e easier, but I'm going to knock out this death pile today. And today's video is a bunch of random things. I'm going to show you a few things that sold, um, tell you a funny story about it. Not really funny. Honestly, I was really irritated whenever it happened. But now, looking back at it, it's funny, and I want to share it with you guys. And I also want to share with you guys a few things I picked up that's in my death pile that I'm going to get listed today. Pretty excited about it, so let's get into it. The first item we're going to talk about are these pair of Cole Haan uh, flip-flops. So, I was cross-listing these onto eBay, and I didn't realize it, but I listed them as an auction starting at 99 cents and i'm sure you guys know where this is going but they did end up selling for 99 cents and that's quite annoying because i mean they're a pair of 20 25 dollar um flip-flops i don't know why i keep forgetting that word but they're a pair of 20 or 25 dollar flip-flops she got for 99 cents plus shipping so great deal for her i'm glad she got it i had to i made the mistake so i had to honor the sale so there they are and she got a fantastic deal so the next thing that sold was actually my micro machines helicopter base thingy and that sold for 50 dollars free shipping i think it cost about 10 or 11 dollars to ship out so that was a 40 dollar profit not too bad so let's get into the next item which are all Poshmark sales and to be honest I have been really killing it on Poshmark I don't know why I haven't got there got on there sooner but I have been on Poshmark for three weeks and already sold like 25 items that's more than I've sold on eBay in a long time so honestly i'm gonna focus a lot more on poshmark but obviously i'm still picking up my hard goods for ebay because i i've never tried selling hard goods on poshmark comment below and let me know if you guys have any luck selling hard goods on poshmark i'm gonna try to dip my toes in the water or whatever today with it a little bit i have um some trendy mugs I'm gonna list on Poshmark and see how well they sell but like I said comment below and let me know how you 
how well your home decor sells on Poshmark. So this next cell has the funny story. Like I said, I was really frustrated at the time. I did not think it was funny whatsoever, but I got this pair of shoes in my thread up shoe box. So it averaged out to be about $5.50 per pair of shoes. And I sold these J Crew high heels for $67 plus shipping, okay? I was so excited. I went out to my garage to go get the box and my neighbor was outside. So I said hi to my neighbor because I haven't talked to her in like a month. And well, I love my neighbor to death, but whenever I get talking to her, she talks for hours, okay? And I should have known better because I left my dogs inside by themselves. I know they like to chew things up because they're both still puppies and well they got to my $67 high heels. Oh I was so freaking mad you have no idea. $67 they chewed up and that's not even it okay. They got to another pair of my shoes that probably would have sold for like $30. And thank God that's all they chewed up. But I'm never saying hi to my neighbor again <laughs> until I go put my dogs up. Long story short, they chewed up a really great sale. And I just, I can't. I can't. I'm honestly still mad about it. But they're dogs. It's my fault. I knew better. <laughs> it's fine. I had a good conversation with my neighbor. So it's a okay, I guess. <laughs> I mean, as you can tell, I'm still crying inside a little bit, but it is what it is. <laughs> the next uh, pair of shoes that sold were these pair of fry boots. And so I think I underpriced these just a little bit. So it was my first time getting my thread up shoe box or whatever. And as you guys know, I know absolutely nothing about fashion. I mean, I just wear big baggy t-shirts and jeans. That's literally my whole style. But anyway, so when I was doing research on my first fashion box or whatever, um, I just, I think I could have only got um, another 30, 20, 30 dollars for these, but these fry boots sold for 60 plus shipping. And that is a good bolo brand to look out for. I got another pair of fry boots in um, my shoe box as well. And they were made in China, so they don't, and they weren't actual leather boots, so they didn't sell for as much. But yes, look out for the made in Mexico leather fry boots. And those are for sure a bolo. The next two items that sold were from my mystery box from the <laughs> whatever it's called the philly flipper i know i'm saying this wrong philly flipper hosted it but it was a fundraiser for adam hartman's wife i'm sorry if i'm not saying this right but anyways i paid ten dollars to enter the raffle and i won and um glamis closet is the one who sent out the mystery box and I'm so excited about it. Honestly, it was such a good mystery box. Definitely worth my $10. And it came with two pink coach wallets. Uh, one sold for $19 because it was scratched up and not in the best shape. And the other one sold for $28 because it was brand new. And yeah, so that's not the only thing that sold. I just wanted to tell you those. And later on, I'm going to show you what's left out of her little mystery box that she sent me and honestly they're so good items I'm, I'm pumped about it so let's wait and see what they are my aunt is a full-time reseller and she called me the other day she lives a few hours away from me but anyway she said this woman that she works with is wanting to pack up and move to florida but that's besides the point so she has a booth set up closer to my location instead of hers and I stopped at her garage sale the other day and I asked her about it and I checked out the kind of items that she had and that she was selling to see if it was anything interesting for me or my aunt. 
And for me, no, not really, because it was a bunch of glassware, but that's what my aunt likes. So anyways, I went through and dug out of the garage sale booth thingy the things that I wanted, and I snapped pictures to send to my aunt and got things that she wanted. But anyway, I want to show you what I got from her garage sale because, I mean, it's cool. <laughs> the first thing I spotted at her garage sale um, was a big bucket full of hats. I was digging through them and there were some decent hats in there, but nothing crazy. She said, ignore the price tags. I want to go. So I was like, okay, so how about $5 for all these hats? And she said, okay, sure. And so I got about 20 hats for $5. And some of them still need clean. Some of them aren't worth anything. So I'm going to either redonate them, put them in my garage sale pile, that kind of thing. But this one, as you guys know, I'm from Indiana. So there's quite a few Indiana hats in here. This is a vintage IU hat. As you can see, there's some yellow discoloration. And I think I'm going to put some of OxyClean. I couldn't think of the name. Some OxyClean and soak this hat and see how well that works. And another vintage IU hat. An Indianapolis Zoo hat. A New York hat. I don't know if it's for Yankees or anything. I don't think so. Um, another Indiana Hoosiers hat. I guess this is a Boston Celtics hat. It doesn't say Celtics. Oh, no. It says Notre Dame. I guess it's a Notre Dame hat. <laughs> and as you guys know, Hard Rock Cafe sells really well for me for some reason. The shirts, the hats, anything Hard Rock Cafe. I even had a Hard Rock Cafe hat sell for me like yesterday or two days ago. So when I seen these, I was like, score. And... This was actually the exact hat that sold for me a couple days ago, but mine was from London. This one's from Chicago, so that's cool. Another Hard Rock Cafe hat. Oh, it's stuck together. So this one's pretty cool, actually. I like this one a lot. Oh, oh, it's falling. <laughs> a marble hat. A genuine leather 49ers hat. Honestly, this is, isn't going to sell for as much as I thought, but I should still probably get about $30 out of it. And this is cool to me, probably because I've never seen a leather hat. But yeah. This is a signed Bill Elliott hat. If you guys know NASCAR, he's a NASCAR driver. Oh, <laughs> ignore my camera falling on me. <laughs> but okay. This is a vintage Red Sox hat. Er... Is it Red Sox? White Sox? I don't know anything about sports. But anyways, it's Chicago. So you guys that know sports can tell me. This one's pretty cool. I thought it's a vintage Mets hat. Another Indy 500 hat. I guess this is a racing hat. This one's pretty neat. A vintage Miami Dolphins hat. Another IU hat. This one will look cool whenever it's cleaned up. If there's any Hoosiers looking for a hat. I just like... Is this... Yeah, I like the embroidery on the side. I was trying to make sure it was embroidery. And yes, it is. And this Paces hat's pretty cool too. But yeah, like I said, I need to wash these, clean them up, and sort through what's actually valuable and what is not. Oh, they've started to fall. <laughs> but I also picked this up from her, and this one had a price tag of $25, and I offered her 7 and she said yes. And the box is really rough, but I'm glad it still has the box. So this is a viewfinder, a really old vintage viewfinder, okay? Look at this. Ain't that so cool? And that's not even it. It has the reels too. So it says seven three-dimensional full color pictures. And this one's South Dakota. 
This one, it's Arcadia National Park. This one is empty. <laughs> and this one has quite a few different reels in here that I'll look at later. But yeah, these things are so cool. There's nothing in here now. Ah, these things are so cool. And I just scared my dog when I screamed. But yeah, these things are neat. And um, doing comps, this should sell for like $40. So seven and 40, not bad. Here's a couple more items that I picked up at Goodwill yesterday. Before we get into Glamma's Closet Designer, uh, I think there's three items left that I got in her mystery box that have not sold that I'm going to show you guys. So yesterday at Goodwill, it was blue tag 99 cent clothing Sunday. And I found this little knit sweater and I paid 99 cents for it, like I said, and it is the brand Timberland. So doing research on this sweater, it should sell for about $30. So 99 cents into $30, not bad at all. And I mean, I like going to Goodwill on 99 cents Sunday because that's cheaper than this would have been at the bins. So fantastic profit. And so I did pay full price for this yesterday at Goodwill, but it is a, if I can get it right, a cute little Woolrich sweater. And, oh, uh, there we go. Woolrich. And it is very pretty, very stylish, and very clean. So I paid $4.50 for this. And I'm thinking about $25, $30 for it. Not bad, but Woolrich is a bolo brand. And it was my first time finding it, so I was like, I had to pick it up. So the first thing I pulled out of Glamour's Closet Mystery Box was a Gucci tank. And I'm just going to insert a picture of it here because it's wrapped up in its little plastic bag so it doesn't get my dog hairs all over it. And so it stays all clean, but yeah, I got a Gucci tank and um, I I was doing research on it to make sure it's real and it is real. It's a, a piece from 2007 and upon further inspection, there's these like little belt loops that go around the waist uh, attached to the t-shirt and there's no belt. That's okay though. I mean, I'm sure it'll still sell. But I have absolutely, obviously no experience with Gucci. And I do have it listed really low because it's missing the belt and I don't know anything about Gucci. But it still hasn't sold for some reason. But I'm like 99% sure it's real according to my research because like I said, I found the gear and everything. But I can't find a stock photo. If you guys have tips for helping me find the stock photo on this Gucci tank, maybe that'll help it sell faster and help me make sure it's authentic 110%. I mean, I'm not saying she would send me anything unauthentic, but I mean, I just have absolutely zero experience with that brand. But anyway, she also sent me this Kate Spade purse. It is a patent leather purse and it is in really good shape. I only see one small little spot here and it's super small, but it's a magnetic closure and the inside is really clean. And yep, yeah, so we got her. She's a nice one. And this one is super cool. I do not carry purses, actually, surprisingly. But honestly, I will say after getting this uh, mystery box that I do want a pink leather coach purse. And I've never carried purses in my life. But if this was a crossbody, I would carry it. <laughs> and it is a um, calf hair, calf hide vintage coach purse. It is the softest coach purse I have ever felt in my life. It is the softest purse I have ever felt in my life, I should say. <laughs> and you open it up, which it's zipped right now. 
but you open it up and it is super clean. And it's got the Coach Creed that matches up and authenticates it. And it's also still got the dust bag. And this one will take a collector of Coach to buy, I'm sure, because, I mean, it's a small little bag and not a lot of people are searching for Coach calf hair, but I, when it does sell, I believe it should sell for $75, $80. So yeah, not bad, <laughs> considering I already made my money back with this $10 raffle within the first day. <laughs> Oh, I mean, this girl has sent me the best mystery box in the world. That'll be it from me today. I'm glad I got to chat with you guys again and put an update video out there for you guys. And like I said, I'll be back to my normal content here soon. Within the next week, I'm sure. My last day at the post office is Friday. I'm super excited about it. Wish me luck on my new adventures and hopefully with this extra time I'll have at my new job, I can keep putting work into my reselling business and my YouTube and hopefully become full time one day because that is the ultimate goal. And yeah, I'm just glad I got a chat with you guys today and thank you for sticking to the very end. It means a lot to me, but bye, peace, and I'll see you later. Thank you.